Uh, welcome to Pen Talk number 18. Uh, my name is Andy, and let's talk about pens and things writing related. Um, let's see, I'm recording this on Saturday, March 12th, and it should be posted either today or tomorrow. Um, let's see, so we're going to follow kind of the normal format that I seem to have set out, where I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been using, um, and what's coming up on the blog in the next week, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I've been reading and listening to, and kind of some reactions to what's going on at right now. Um, also, you guys should smell the room that I'm in right now. I'm recording this in my bedroom, if you couldn't tell, because this is my bed right here. Um, and, like, seriously, oh, it smells so good. I, I have a little wax melter, um, and I had bought a bunch of, like, Chris, Christmas scented, like, little waxes to melt in it, and I had finished those up and I hadn't bought more yet um, because I actually don't mind the Christmas ones like, you know, because they were very wintry. But now that it's definitely springy here, I wanted something different. So I bought um, lemon scented ones. I think it, the, the scent was called like sweet lemon or something. It's the Burt's Bees ones. And oh my gosh, they smell so good. Um, I love lemon scented things. Like my perfume that I use is lemon scented. Most of the soaps that I buy are lemon or other citrus or like grapefruit or something. Um, so like, oh, I am in heaven right now, which is great because it's kind of gray outside. But anyway, let's talk about things that we're here to talk about. Um, so what I've been using this past week. This past week was a weird week for me because it was spring break, um, here at VCU. So like, I was still working, of course, but, um, it, it was a different kind of week. Like I wasn't teaching or anything because there were no students. So what I was doing for the past week was I was editing lab manuals all week. Um, so I actually didn't really use most of my pens or pencils. Um, so in terms of like what's in my knock lookout, it's the same stuff that was in here last week. Also, if you see me looking down this because my computer's right here. Um, it's the same stuff I was using last week. So I have my Pilot Juice and my Micron, which I think I showed this last week. Um, I switched out my Micron for a micro perm, which is just a per like the like permanent alcohol-based version of a Micron. Um, and then I have my, let's see, Vista that has the KWZ Iron Gall Turquoise, which was reviewed this past week. I think it got shook around a little bit. There's a little bit of ink kind of floating around in there. Um, that ink was reviewed this past week by Paul on gorgeous.ink, and he's the one who actually sent me a sample of this to try out, and oh my gosh, I love it so much. Um, but anyway, I will make sure to link to his review of it, because I thought, I think he does a really good job with all of his ink reviews. But um, yeah, this is a great ink, and I will be reviewing it probably in April, since my kind of like calendar for March is all filled out with other stuff, but um, I love it. and. Uh, I'm glad that Paul sends very generous samples because I'm definitely going to want to use it more than once. So yeah, so that's still in here. And then in my gray safari is still um, Dea Tremendous Document Fuchsia, which also will be reviewed probably in April. Um, so yeah, so nothing has really changed there because I haven't really worked through any of those pens or any of the ink in the two fountain pens. Um, Cause like I said, I just wasn't really using fountain pens. Um, when I was editing these lab manuals, I kind of needed two things. I needed a very fine tip because a lot of times I was like writing in between lines of like printed writing, um, which I mean, I do have very fine tip fountain pens, but um, I also needed something that like I could leave open for a while because what I was doing was I was going through the lab and making notes as I was running through the lab and like taking data to like write up better answer keys. So, um, I needed something that I could leave like uncapped or like, or like I didn't want to keep like uncapping and capping something. So like mostly what I was using was Pilot G2s, which I don't love Pilot G2s because like they don't have the best like longevity in terms of water resistance or light resistance. But um, they are very, I have some that are very fun colors and very bright and nice to use. And for something very non-permanent, like what I was doing where it's like, well, you know, I need those notes until I get them put on the computer, which will be another week or two. And it works just fine and it was fun to use and you know I could click it open and leave it clicked open and, and it works just fine so yeah not a big fountain pen week for me but you know sometimes that's okay sometimes it's about using the appropriate tool for the task at hand and this week it was gel pens go figure um so yeah but coming up on the bloggy blog this week and I know that this will happen for sure because I actually just recorded this video this morning so 
it is it is done already um but this should get posted on wednesday is i did a face off between two sharpeners so the first sharpener is what i am calling the new hotness which is the um kum masterpiece and i don't know if the autofocus on the camera is turned off right now it could be that the autofocus is off let me whatever the point is kum masterpiece and then the other one that I was looking at was the Kum single hole long point sharpener. So I did a face off between these two sharpeners. I'm not gonna give away which one I prefer. Um, you'll just have to read, or well, I guess watch the video on um, Wednesday. Um, I'll probably write up a brief little like um, summary of it at, at the end of the post because you know it's, it's about a 17 minute video and I don't want people to have to sit through that if they don't have time but I'm not gonna tell you right now which one I prefer, but I definitely prefer one over the other. So there is that. Uh, and then something else that I forgot to mention again last week, but I will mention this this week. Uh, I mentioned in episode 16 that I'm doing what I'm calling Stash Smash 2K16, where I'm trying to de-stash, de-stash, and or work through some of the stationary stash that I've acquired. And part of that is that I am trying to get rid of some, sur not get rid of, but you know, rehome some surplus pencils. So if you would like um, between five and 10 of these pencils sent to you, just send me a letter or a postcard or whatever, as long as it has your return address on it so I can send them back to you. And I think I wanted you to say kind of where you are in your stash acquisition slash de-stashing you know, process. As, as kind of a prompt in case you needed something to talk about or just tell me about yourself. Uh, send that to my P.O. box, uh, which is in the, uh, up along the top of the bloggy blog, there is a contact little header and you can push that. And on that page is my P.O. box address. So send me something and I will send you some pencils. And yeah, I forgot to mention that if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be a link in the description box below to the blog post that will have any other important links down below the video. I'm not, I don't really have it together today. It's, it's been a weird day. I got stressed out by something earlier that's completely unimportant and I shouldn't be stressed out about it, but now I'm kind of all frazzled. My brain's all crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about what I have been reading and listening to and all that kind of stuff this past week, which means I need to get my links up on the computer. So one thing that I saw that was pretty cool, I mentioned, I think again on episode 16, I mentioned a post um, over at the finer point about like how I use my notebooks. And I saw another post like that this week that's on Plowody. Pl I don't know how to pronounce it, P-L-W-O-D-I.com. And of course I will link to the post, but this is a post about how I use paper. And it's just this person's kind of description on what they, like how they use their paper and writing instruments and stuff like that. And, you know, I've said this before, I find that really fascinating and I really enjoy reading those kinds of things. So this was really fun just to kind of see some different ways that, you know, you can work using paper into your daily life, even if your daily life isn't necessarily writing on paper intensive. So very interesting. Uh, so then something else that I saw this week that was very interesting, and this kind of relates to last week, I said that D at the Weekly Pencil had reviewed a pencil that I had and hadn't used yet. This week, same thing happened again. So she reviewed the Camel HB, which I have here. Hers has a white eraser. I think they, they come with two different eraser colors. You can either get white or you can get um, kind of a darker gray like this one is, but it's the same pencil. And she reviewed it, and like you can see, I haven't had a chance to sharpen mine yet because I got it in my last CW pencils order and have a zillion other pencils to use. So she seemed very impressed with the pencil itself, not so impressed with the eraser because I guess it just didn't work very well. And I was actually very intrigued because she popped the eraser off of it. And that's probably something I will wind up doing too because I was very curious about what was under the eraser and I just don't see myself leaving that on there for very long. But it is very strange to have a, um, like a ferrule eraser on a pencil. I've never seen that before, but I'm trying to think if, okay, so apparently the focus is set on autos. Let's see if this will 
Focus, come on. Focus, there we go. So it's a ferrule-less eraser, which is so strange to me. I don't, I don't know that I like that. But yeah, so that's the camel, and I will of course link to that blog post. And then in similar fashion, um, Anna at the well-appointed desk reviewed the uh, craft design technology mint green pencil. And this again is another one that I have bought and have not used yet, unsharpened. But these are these very pretty like minty green sort of pencils and I, oh my gosh, I bet it's way too bright. Come on. I don't, I'm trying to think of what I can use to like make it actually focus on this. Is that, that's making it worse, isn't it? Come on. Yep, that's making it worse. Well, I cannot technology today. Anyway, um, I will link to her post. Go look at her photography over there. Anyway, it's a very pretty like mint green pencil with again, that like same ferrule eraser. So I don't know if these are made by the same like parent company or how that works, but she actually said the eraser was really good, which is surprising because D said the eraser on this one was really bad. So maybe they aren't made by the same people. They just have the same kind of eraser, but either way, both of these are pencils that I definitely need to try soon, but um, I'm glad to hear that they are at least good writers. Um, whether or not the erasers work well, I guess we will have to see. But yeah, and that's about it in terms of things that like I would be showing the camera. So kind of like I said last week, now I'm just going to keep talking. But if you want to open up another window and just listen, um, there will be nothing left to necessarily show you um, from this point on. Uh, so I guess the other big news this week before I get to like podcasty things is that the new Field Notes came out. I am not a Field Notes subscriber and I have gone back and forth on how much I like Field Notes. Uh, but needless to say, I won't be buying this edition. I love this edition. I think they are so pretty. Uh, I really wish I had a use for them, but I don't tend to like perforated paper and notebooks. It just kind of drives me nuts. And I have, a, I have a hair on my glasses that I keep seeing. Like anyone who has glasses will know this feeling where you can kind of see it, but you like, you know, it's so close to your eyes that you, anyway, gone now. Uh, anyway, so I, I want to have a use for the field notes, but I know that I don't have a use for them, so I'm not going to buy them because I would just be spending money on something that I want to look at, but not necessarily use. I know a lot of people are kind of, you know, some people really love them and definitely have a use for them, and then some people really hate them. And I mean, isn't that the case with every issue of field notes? But I think it definitely divides up into like, do you have a use for them or not? And I think that the people who have a use for them probably like them a lot. And people who don't have a use for them are very meh about it because you don't have a use for it. So, you know, you feel like, especially if you're a subscriber and you don't have a use for something like this that kind of has a specific use case, I can see where someone might feel a little bit cheated, but I just am kind of like, eh, well, big crybabies. So I think they're very pretty. I would love to have a use for them, but I don't, so I'm not gonna buy them. Wah, wah. Uh, also, in terms of subscription things, uh, shipping notifications for the new Blackwing volumes have gone out, so hopefully I'll be getting that this next week. We'll see. But um, yeah, when I do get those, I will try and do an unboxing video the same day that I get them. So we'll see when that happens, but I'm excited to see what they've come up with because I have liked all of them so far. I, yeah, I've liked all of them so far. So there's that. Anyway, uh, on to pod podcasty things. So these are, I'm just looking at my notes. So let's see, what have I been listening to? I listened to the most recent episode of The Pen Addict, which is episode 195. And they were talking about the scribble pen, which I won't go into that because I don't know necessarily. I basically know what I've heard on the pen addict about the scribble pen. So I'm not going to go into that, but I did want to kind of take that as a jumping off point to talk about Kickstarter a little bit because, you know, the pen and paper community kind of is very buddy buddy with Kickstarter people. And I think that's great. I also think there are some pitfalls to the Kickstarter model. Uh, I definitely, I, I don't back a ton of stuff on Kickstarter. I'm very selective about what I will back on Kickstarter. And because my theory is that if it's that good, it should go to market. You know, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about crowdfunding because 
I like crowdfunding because it can definitely bring things like bullet pencils that don't necessarily appeal to a mainstream audience and you might have a tough time really getting going with that if you don't have something like Kickstarter. In that case, I love it. And um, like Story Supply Co. Love it. Great. But I also have, you know, backed some things on Kickstarter or seen some things on Kickstarter that I'm like, mm, that product really shouldn't be out there necessarily. And, um, and these aren't necessarily things that were like wildly successful and, you know, bombed after being funded. These are just things that I'm like, yeah, no, that, that doesn't, no, no, no. And so what, what I think, I, I don't want to call this a problem with Kickstarter, but definitely something I think interesting about Kickstarter is it kind of circumvents that like natural selection that products have to go through when they go to market, you know? So like I said, something like a bullet pencil, if you tried to take that and sell it, I don't know, at some chain store or something, it's not gonna work because the general public doesn't care about bullet pencils. And in that case, it'd be very sad that it wouldn't sell very well. But there are some things that I'm like, why do we need this? You know, this has no point. It's purely just for the looks or the aesthetics or whatever. So why? Um, and I don't want to give any specific examples or anything, but there are just definitely some things that I see on Kickstarter where I'm like, nope, nope, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be a product because you're useless and you're not going to work the way that you say that you're going to. So you should just die. You know, this product should die. Um, but yeah, so that I, I have mixed feelings about Kickstarter. And like I said, I'm very selective about what I will what I will back on Kickstarter. That being said, I have been seeing uh, murmurings for the new Timber Twist, I think is what it's being called, the bullet pencil um, from uh, Metal Shop CT, I think. I, oh my gosh, I hope I'm not confusing that. Anyway, the bullet pencil, that the, the Twist bullet pencil, but with like a wooden body on it. Oh, I'm so excited. And I probably will back that because, oh, so pretty. And because I like the Twist bullet pencil. So there's that. So yeah, so that's pen addict stuff. Um, and then, like I've said before, I listened to the podcast Analog, which has my Curly and Casey Liss on it. And while that's not necessarily pen related, I kind of feel like it fits in with this stuff. And so I was listening to their latest episode, which was episode number 75. And I don't know exactly what was said because all I, all I have is like the notes that I made that, you know, are not necessarily what they said, but it's what it made me think of to talk about. So I don't remember exactly what was said, but what I have written down is being more careful slash aware of the picture you paint of yourself on the internet. And so they were talking about something related to that apparently. And it's definitely something, or that is definitely something that I have been more aware of kind of as I've been putting more of myself out on the internet is, um, you know, how much information am I giving out, you know, and, and how does this look? Because I feel like the more of yourself you put online, the more aware you have to be of, of this overall picture that you're presenting of yourself. And, and the nice thing is, is that because I control all the information being put out there, I can control how I look on the internet. So I can be a completely different person on the internet than I am in real life. You guys don't necessarily know that because I control the flow of information about myself to the internet, at least at this point. And, and, and it's really important too, to remember like this stuff doesn't go away. You know, we think that we can delete things, but like with the internet these days, things don't go away. It's kind of out there somewhere forever. So you always have to be aware of what you're saying and this picture that you're painting and that it's a cumulative effect. And that's just something that I'm trying to be more aware of just ongoing and I'm not always very good at it because I am by nature an oversharer in, in real life and on the internet and I just always have to be aware of like what are you saying what is what are the connotations of this should you be saying this and all of that um, and not just about myself I've had times where I have recorded something and I will be listening to it and I'll realize oh my gosh I you know Oversharing about my own life is one thing, but like I'll overshare about Wesley. Sorry, that's got to get scrapped because I can't do that because that's not just me that makes that call anymore. That's him too. And you know, he doesn't get to control what I say. So I have to like censor myself if I overshare about him or someone else in my life. 
So that's just something very interesting that I've definitely been giving more thought to. So it was interesting to hear other people give more thought to that too. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Kind of a shorter thing today, just because I just haven't been doing a lot in terms of writing stuff this past week. Like I said, it was a weird week for me, but it was a very productive week, which is good because I needed a very productive week at work and I really wanted to utilize the most of this time. But it definitely makes for a less exciting week when it comes to doing this kind of stuff because I really just had my nose to the grindstone and I was just doing stuff. And I was just doing what was most efficient, which isn't always the most exciting thing. But like I said, I will have that sharpener post up later this week, so let me know what you guys think about that, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!